Your brain is a complex structure of about 90 billion neurons and 100 trillion synapses that weighs about 3 pounds. It is alone in the darkness of your skull. There are different regions in the brain that control different things. The frontal controls movement, planning, and creativity. The parietal controls sensations like touch, pressure, temperature, and pain. The occipital is responsible for sight, and the temporal controls hearing and memory. Obviously, these different regions, or lobes, all contribute differently to how your brain works. Your brain wouldn't be able to perceive the world around it and react accordingly if the connections inside and outside the brain weren't in place or were connected incorrectly. Axon targeting is how brain cells figure out how to make these connections. Before we get to that, though, you need to know the basics of a brain cell, also known as a neuron. The cell body of the neuron, called the soma, is filled with a gel called the cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm are little mini-organs, called organelles, that are necessary for proper functioning and maintenance of the cell, often in the form of energy or protein production. Aside from the soma, the two other main parts of the cell are the axon and the dendrites. These are how neurons communicate with each other and with other cells in the body, such as muscle cells. The axon is often quite long and stretches far from the soma. It sends electrical signals from the neuron to other cells, like a cell tower. This signal is received by the dendrites of a different neuron, like a cell phone receiving signals from the cell tower. Unlike axons, where there's only one per neuron, there can be many different dendrites coming from one neuron. Where the axon and the dendrite meet, there is a little gap called a synapse. In order to pass the signal on to the next cell, the signal that was received by the dendrite is converted into an electrical impulse and sent through the soma to the axon. This signal is then changed back into a chemical signal which is released by the axon into the synapse and received by the dendrite where it is again converted into an electrical impulse. Because the layout of the nervous system is constantly growing and changing during early stages of development, it is essential that the neurons connect to the right places and form strong connections early on so that later in development, when more neurons are being created and trying to go to the right place, they can follow the same path that the earlier axons pioneered, easily navigating the constantly changing and ever more complex brain and nervous system so they can end up where they need to be. To ensure that the correct axon follows the proper route, different axons will respond to the same protein differently. This is because of differentiation, a process undifferentiated cells, also known as stem cells, undergo, which determines what type of cell, blood, muscle, skin, brain, etc., they will become. Once the cells have specialized into a certain type of cell, they will differentiate further so they can do more specialized tasks. In the case of the nervous system, some become central nervous system cells that make up the brain and spinal cord. Some become the neurons found in the peripheral nervous system, controlling your muscle movements and relaying sensations such as temperature and pain. Still other cells become something called glia cells. Glia cells live in the nervous system alongside neurons, guiding and eventually maintaining the neurons. The development of the nervous system starts when cells that have differentiated into neurons begin reaching out with their axons and connecting to other neurons and tissues. At the tip of an axon, there is something called a growth cone that decides where the axon goes and what dendrites or other tissues it connects with. The growth cone consists of two main parts, the philopodia and lamellipodia. The philopodia are the spiky parts and the lamellipodia are the webbing in between the philopodia. The philopodia and lamellipodia are constantly growing by deconstructing themselves and then reforming, a process called treadmilling that causes the axon attached to the growth cone to continue to grow in the direction that the growth cone leads. Using cues from outside the neuron, the philopodia determines where to go. This happens because the philopodia are super sensitive to cues, generally proteins, that other cells release. These proteins are the cell's way of telling each other where they are in the developing organism. Philopodia will send out little feelers to see if a protein they are attracted to is nearby, like a bloodhound sniffing out a specific scent. If they do sense an attractant protein nearby, they will redirect the route of the axon to move towards that protein. They do this by building up the hard insides that make up the philopodia, faster on the side that is nearer to the attractor. The same is true for repulsive cues. If philopodia sends a negative cue, the feelers will shrink back and the growth cone will begin turning away from the cue. Sometimes, philopodia, exploring their surroundings, will be attracted to or repulsed by a protein in a gradient, and different levels of a protein will cause different responses of the growth cone. In this case, the proteins get a special name, morphogens.
This just means that the amount of protein present will influence what the growth cone does. So even though two different growth cones were exposed to the same type of protein, they might respond differently because they were exposed to different amounts. One might grow straight towards the protein in the highest concentration gradient, and one might curve so that it is angling towards the highest concentration gradient. Axons grow through tissues called an intermediate target. Intermediate targets often secrete the proteins that tell the growth cone where to go, playing an important role in making sure the growth cone, and by extension the axon, finds the correct target. Often this intermediate target tissue will secrete proteins that initially attract certain growth cones, but upon reaching the target, the growth cone changes directions because after reaching the highest concentration of that specific protein, the responsiveness to the protein changes. This means that although axons reach the area with the highest concentration of a specific morphogen, they won't stay in that area of high concentration because that is not what the growth cone is most attracted to anymore. Axon growth is not just 2D though. Many times axons will grow and turn in different directions besides just left and right. Intermediate tissues play a big role in that as well because they are three-dimensional and secrete cues that can act to guide the growth cones towards their final destination. Intermediate tissues sometimes even migrate along with the growth cone to the final destination, like a pacer car in NASCAR. One final factor in determining where axons eventually end up is the ability of a growth cone to sense the proteins being secreted by surrounding cells. This is called competence. A cell that is competent to receive a repulsive protein might stop short when a protein. An incompetent cell, or a cell that doesn't have the receptors to sense the protein, might continue to grow in the direction of a repulsive cue, since it can't sense the cue. Just like you might continue to walk towards something that smells bad if you had your nose plugged. In short, axon targeting is accomplished by having the highly sensitive tip of an axon, the growth cone, follow secreted cues through a constantly changing intermediate tissue a highly detailed and specific process that has the potential for much more study, including research into the treatment of diseases or injuries that result in the destruction or misguidance of axons.